All right, so I've been saying I was gonna do this video uh, for like a couple of weeks now, so I'm just gonna jump into it. I'm going to be talking about uh, the power of fast, and I'm gonna be talking about different types of fast that you can do. Um, a lot of fast that people do, sometimes people will say they fasting and they're fasting from Facebook or they're fasting from uh, TV. That's not a fast, that's called consecration. Um, so if you're not fasting from food, then it's not really a fast. Uh, but there are different types of fasts that you can do when you are fasting from foods. There's a Daniel fast that you can do uh, where you're just doing fruits, where you're doing vegetables. You're also doing certain things like uh, things from the earth, like peanuts and stuff like that. Um, now, that's not eggs are not included with Daniel fast. Uh, but you can do just like different types of nuts, uh, just vegetables, and like I said, things from the earth. Uh, and you can uh, drink, but you're supposed to only drink water with that. Um, you can also do a water fast, and you can do a fast where you're doing uh, not only water, but you're doing water and juices. Um, another fast you can do, you know, pray about this fast, but it's called an absolute fast where you're not doing uh, anything. You're not drinking, you're not eating, you're just withstanding. Uh, Moses did that for 40 days. Uh, so uh, those are the different types of fasts that you can uh, do. And uh, you know, you don't have to, I would pray about how long you're gonna do. Uh, some people fast for 12 hours. A lot of times, you know, people will fast for three days from six to six. I don't know why they do those times, but I know there's a meaning behind it. I just don't, you know, I don't know why they do that, but uh, that's a, a time that people often fast for six to six. So you can fast for 12 hours. You could uh, do one meal a day. You could do uh, three days. You can do seven days, 21. Just, you know, pray how long, uh, you know, God wants you to fast for. Um, you know, when I first started fasting, I, uh, you know, I was young in the faith, and so I would fast because I would want things from God. I would fast because I would want a job or, or stuff like that. But what I realize now that fasting is really about uh, having subjection over the flesh. And fasting will do wonders when it comes to that because, I mean, I had a lot of issues in my flesh where it would come to, you know, uh, thoughts that I would think. I had a temper problem. Anybody who know me, like, I just would, uh, I, it wouldn't take much for me to cuss you out real quick or for, you know, me to fight. And uh, I just know for a fact that fasting helped me keep my you know, my flesh up on subjection when it comes to, you know, being quick to say stuff, you know, uh, also, you know, not just with that, but just like fleshly desires. I used to smoke cigarettes. I went on a fast in 2014. I think I did the Daniel fast when I came off, I stopped smoking cigarettes. Um, now I did go back, but I didn't, I would go back. Like, I think I might've smoked no more than seven cigarettes, uh, after that. You know, I might go six months, seven months, and I would ask for a cigarette, but it finally did get broken. Um, and Isaiah 58 and 6, it, it talks about, you know, is this the fast that I have t uh, chosen to loose the band of wickedness uh, so the oppressed will be set free? And so what it does is it breaks strongholds, you know, off of your life. Uh, I think it's in Matthew 17 when Jesus uh, had asked, you know, there was a guy, his boy, he was possessed by a demon. And uh, the disciples, they weren't able to cast it out. And they asked Jesus why. And then he said, this kind goes out by prayer and fasting. See, sometimes there you can have a stronghold in your life. And the reason why it's so strong, because it's not something that you have done. It could have been something that came in through the bloodline. And those are what you call generational spirits that you can call them familiar spirits, but they've been in your family. They've been in the bloodline for a long time. So, you know, if you're struggling in some type of uh, area in sin, whether it is like pornography or if it's an addiction and you just feel like or if it's depression or, you know, gluttony, whatever it may be. And you feel like that you can't get free from it and you're trying and you're trying and trying. You know, I always tell people like go on a fast, you know, but prepare to go on a fast. You know, you don't want to just jump into a three day fast if you never fast before, you know, uh, but it will it, it breaks strongholds off your life. And uh, 
you know, Jesus talks about in Matthew 6, uh, he says, you know, when you fast, he tells people like, you know, he's telling, I don't know if he's talking to the disciples uh, or what, but I do, I do know in Matthew 6, he's talking about when you fast. And he says it in a way like, you know, that's something that we are supposed to be doing, you know, but he says, you know, don't just go off and just tell uh, everybody like the, the Pharisees do. And that's what I see a lot of people doing sometimes. I know they don't know no better, but you know, when you fast, that's something that you want to keep between you and God. You know, it is nothing that you want to put on Facebook. You don't want to tell people, you know, uh, I'm about to fast and I'm not about to be on here and stuff like that. You can say that you're not going to be on Facebook, but you don't want to say that you're going on fast. Now, if you have an accountability partner, or if you have somebody that's going to be praying for you, then that's cool. Then you can let them know that you're going to uh, be on a fast, but you just don't want to just tell everybody what you're doing because that's your that's going to be your reward all the likes that you get on facebook or all the praise and you might not get nothing but seven but that's going to be your reward and you might as well don't fast you know but uh fasting will be life-changing uh i really think you know more leaders should talk about that because it brings spiritual it brings spiritual maturity to your life you will grow you know, uh, there might be a person who's only been saved for like four years, but a person that's been saved for four years and he's living a life of fasting and prayer. He, it, you know, he might, you know, do more than a person who's been saved for 20 years. You know, uh, there it, it doesn't move God and it doesn't change God, but what it does, it changes you. Really what it's doing when you're fasting, it increases your faith. See, faith will move heaven. You know, uh, fear will move hell, but faith moves heaven. And one thing that I noticed about, you know, when I've been on fast and I'm fasting for a long period of time, I end up uh, believe. It's not like that I don't believe before, but when your body is being cleansed and when it's being purified, like all those toxins is leaving your mind, you're just able to believe, you know, and when you're when you're pure and when you're cleansed like that you know, you are uh, tapping into heaven. You're able to hear God more clearly, not just when you're on the fast, but you'll be more sensitive to the spirit that you can hear him more clearly, you know, when you come off. A lot of times people say that never, they never, they don't hear God. And, you know, like most of those people are people that don't fast that are not in prayer. That's another thing too. When you're fasting, you just don't want to just, it's not a diet. You can't make it a diet. Uh, you get supernaturally fed by the word of God. You want to be reading. You want to be praying. Um, I went on a fast last year, you know, and it was for 11 days. And anybody that know me know I love to eat. And I was just telling somebody last night, you know, it's it was supernatural because I was only going to fast for a couple of days, but I noticed that I was not hungry. And like, to me, that's a, that's a miracle because like I said, like I love to eat. But when you are praying and when you are in the word, you are just supernaturally just being fed. Uh, so when you're when you're fasting, you got to have prayer. You got to have the word uh, and it will sustain you. And uh, like I said, you know, when I used to fast, like back in the day, I would fast for things and stuff. But as I've grown, like I, it's not because of that. It's because, you know, uh, for me to get in the presence of God, for me to be spiritually mature so I could have, you know, control over my flesh. Because, you know, uh, we are spirit, we're soul and we're flesh and we're always at war with the with the soul and the flesh. But when you're fasting, your spirit, man, your inner man is growing and you're able to put the flesh up under subjection. You know, and so uh, fasting, it just kind of you you get increased like that spiritually, you know, just mind, soul and, and body. And uh, another reason, you know, to fast, too, is, you know, I, I spend so a lot of time not necessarily just praying for myself, but I pray for other people. You know, uh, you don't want to be selfish and just be praying for yourself all the time. If there's something that you need from God, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, sometimes, you know, I will fast for answers. If I'm going to make a decision on something, I really want to hear God, I'll, I'll fast. Um, I believe that, you know, when it comes to marriages, you know, if you feel like you don't know uh, if God has, you know, put if a person that you're dating, if you don't know for sure if that's your wife or that's your husband, like fast on that. Um so, uh, like I said before, it will increase your faith. It will increase your sensitivity. It will put your flesh up under subjection, uh, and it will break demonic strongholds in your life. Uh, and you will grow spiritually. 
uh, like I said before, a lot of times people will wait until their church fast. Some churches don't say anything about fasting, but sometimes people just will fast once a year with their church. And I'm not saying nothing about that. That's cool. However you do it, but like you don't really just want to make it uh, just about you know, doing it when other people do it, you know, like it should be really more than anything. Fasting should just be about your relationship with God so it can grow so you can be closer to God because that's what it does. It brings you closer to God. Now, one thing that I will say, if you are, if you fasting and if you are challenging things to break in your life, uh, sometimes before things get better, they get worse. You know, sometimes you can start having crazy dreams. And when what's happening is, is that God is revealing things to you. You know, uh, I see spirits in my dreams, you know, uh, and at first it used to mess me up. You know, I'd be scared. But when I realized God was just showing me things to deal with. So that's what happens. Like, you know, you are coming against the enemy if you are trying to be free from whatever it is you're trying to be free from. If that's the type of fast you're doing. So yeah, a lot of times people get mad. They might be on a three day fast. And then next thing you know, like they lose a job or their car break down or they get sick. And when that happens, you should be glad because that's how you know that it's working for you. If you're challenging a spirit and nothing happens, I'm not going to say that don't mean it's not working. But when stuff like that happens with me, that shows me like I'm, I'm doing something. I'm stirring something up. I'm breaking free. But what the enemy does is he tries to make you feel like that you're not going to be free. So he'll do the opposite of what you're believing for. So if that happens, don't be alarmed. Just know that just keep on pressing. And you might, if, if, if you go on a fast and you're trying to break free from lust, because let's be real, that's with something, that's something everybody struggle with. That's something I talk about a lot. Uh, you might, you know, have to do a couple of fasts. You know, I believe if you really believe that you can be free and you go on a three day fast, I believe that you'll be free. But then sometimes, I mean, it's, it's different with different people. If God wants you to learn more then, uh, or if your faith is not there, you may not be free after that, but just don't give up. Just keep on, uh, believing and, uh, like I always say, who the son has set free will be free. Indeed. If y'all got any more questions, uh, well, I got people that I talk to that ask me questions, but if there's any questions that anybody want to ask me about it or experiences that I have had, I, I could talk about that a lot. One thing I will say that, that fasting will do too, that 11 day fast that I went on, uh, after I did that fast, I ended up having a gift that I didn't have before. Fasting will unlock spiritual gifts that are on the inside of you. You might have you know, gifts in you that you don't even know about, whether if it's to prophesy or even if you're called to preach, you was already, you know, you already had those gifts inside you, but what fast and do, it will unlock gifts uh, that you didn't know about. And you'll, like I said, you'll become spiritually stronger. Uh, so I hope this video bless somebody. If you like the video, hit the like. If uh, you think this might bless somebody, share it with them. And uh, if you like my channel, subscribe to it. Um, I love y'all. Praying for everybody. I hope y'all have a blessed day. God bless.